I don't know about you lot, but this elixir business, it's not getting out of hand. It's gotten out of hand and it's driving me nutty. I've got five elixir fragrances here to go through today. And at the end of it, I'm going to let you know which one is my favourite out of the five that I have got. I have got a few more samples of different elixir fragrances, but I thought I'm just going to keep it to the ones that I actually own full bottles of. And we're going to talk about this. good youtube hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel my name is mike michael mikey cologne and if you're tuned in as always thank you very much for doing so it does mean a hell of a lot so thank you very much if you're new to my channel and you do enjoy my content hit that subscribe button if you don't mind and to all my subscribers thank you very much for all your support a lot of you comment on my videos and I try and get back to you, which I do. And I just appreciate your time. So again, thank you very much. That is right. Today, I've got five elixirs to go through. And at the end of the review, I'm going to let you know which one my favourite is. This is not going in order. I'm just going to talk about each one quickly. And then I'm going to let you know which is my own personal favourite number one. Elixir is not a concentration, it's just a name at the end of a fragrance. And for each fragrance that I talk about, I will put up the concentration of the fragrance next to the title on screen. But first off, we're going to go back to where it basically all began, where the elixirs started. It is the Your Sauvage Elixir. This is a 60ml bottle and this says perfume concentrated or concentrated perfume at the bottom of the bowl. 60ml, smaller bottle, but this is a big fragrance. Very masculine. This has that fougere barbershop style going on with it. Great atomizers. Your atomizers are really good, pressurized. You do not need a lot of this fragrance. Right, you got nutmeg, cinnamon, cardamom, grapefruit, lavender, kumarin, licorice, ambroxin, patchouli, woods, and Haitian vetiver. This opens up very spicy. The cinnamon adds a little bit of sweetness into the top plus it adds spice along with the cardamom and the nutmeg and the nutmeg as well i think adds a little bit of sweetness into the mix but straight away with the spice you get lavender and that lavender in this fragrance is there through and through you get it up top it's in the mid and it's in the base Yes, it gives this fragrance an aromatic side, plus it's what gives this that fougere style, so to speak. It's kind of a throwback feel, modernised, if that makes sense, because nothing about this screams old school, but there is a little bit of an old school twist to it. So fresh, spicy, very heavy on the spice, aromatic, there's a little bit of sweetness in there. Now, once it starts heading into the mid, that fresh spice turns into warm and spicy from the kumarin and the licorice. The ambroxin starts coming through. Now the lavender has turned up a little bit. You get a woodsy undertone. In the late dry down, I do get some light earthy touches. The spice is still there, like I say, but it's warm spice. Quickly before I forget, the grapefruit I do detect up top. It is there sitting in the back, but it is overshadowed by all that spice. This is a spicy fragrance through and through. 
starts out fresh spicy, then turns into warm spicy. Everything sitting on a base of woods. You've got the vetiver, you've got the woodsy notes. It's a great fragrance. It's strong. Like I say, it's masculine. This fragrance is in great, or this fragrance is great for situations if you're rocking a suit, if you're looking smart, because it has this, I mean, business vibe to it. Like it's very abrupt. It's strong. It's loud. It's bold. It's clean. It is a great fragrance. And like I say, this is where it all started with the Eau Sauvage Elixir. Eight plus hours with this, any day of the week. It's an all year round fragrance. But in the summer, I would go light on the trigger. Because in general, you need to go light on the trigger. Because it's a loud fragrance. So in the summer, if you're going to wear this, you would get away with one spray. You would. And you would probably still detect it all day. But anyway, it is a great fragrance. This one that I'm going to talk to you about now, when I first got it, I thought to myself, why did this company go down this direction for this fragrance? And I wasn't a lover of it at first. Not that I wasn't a lover. It's been done before plenty of times. And then the more that I've worn this, the longer that I've owned it, I appreciate it for what it is. It is Club de Nui Urban Man Elixir. This fragrance to me is, if you don't want to stand there for five or ten minutes looking at your collection, if you've got a big collection, so to speak, and you don't want to think, oh, what am I going to wear today that's going to smell good? To me, this is a grab and go. It does smell very pleasing, mass appealing, easy to wear, don't have to overthink it, it lasts a long time and it gives off blue vibes or that blue style of fragrance, so to speak. This fragrance reminds me of two fragrances. It reminds me of this fragrance from House of Afnan, Supremacy Not Only Intense, which reminds people of Dior, which reminds people of Creed's Aventus. Plus, this reminds me of Dior Sauvage, the EDT. When this first opens up, right, let me read you the notes and then I can explain it better. You've got bergamot, pink pepper, jasmine, orange blossom, lavender, saffron, tagets, elemi resin, geranium, vetiver, ambroxin, amber, cedar, labdanum and patchouli. Big note breakdown, but you don't get all them notes with this. When this first opens up, citrusy, fresh, spicy, fruity. Now, the fruity facet or the fruity side to this opening must be coming from the jasmine and the orange blossom. The florals must be giving this fragrance that fruity touch. You do pick up on the bergamot. The lavender is near on there straight away, so it's aromatic. So fresh, citrusy, fruity, sweet, aromatic. After a few minutes, the ambroxin starts coming in. Right, it's the opening that reminds me of this fragrance, which reminds people of Creed of Venus. And then once it starts drying down, not even after a couple of minutes, that is when I can start picking up on a Dior Sauvage vibe. Not one-to-one, -one, but there's similarities there. There's similarities to both of these fragrances, to Dior Sauvage and Afnan Supremacy, not only intense Creed's Aventus style fragrance. So this is in them veins. If you own them two fragrances... And you get this, I'm sure, I'm guaranteed that you will pick this up. As this dries down, it turns woodsy. It does go a little bit musky. The fragrance then, the more this settles on your skin, a little bit of warmth comes in. Still stays fresh, 
but it just warms up a little bit on my skin. I get little smoky touches with this, plus I do get earthy nuances in the dry down. Fresh, citrusy, fruity, ambroxin, blue style fragrance, woodsy, aromatic, a little bit musky, a little bit earthy. It's a very mass appealing fragrance. If you enjoy fragrances in general, I don't think that you will dislike this, but I don't think you're going to be blown away by it. If you don't own Dior Sauvage or any Creed Aventus clones, because there's loads out there, or Creed Aventus, and you want something that's giving off them vibes, this is a great pickup. But if you own them fragrances already, me personally, it's redundant to own it. Two good things about this. It's inexpensive and it lasts a long time. I get eight hours plus with this fragrance. You get 105 mil. I think you can pick this up for about 40 pound in the UK. So when you look at it on that side of the coin, it's worth the money. But if you own loads of fragrances, like I say, the ones that I've just mentioned, I think it's redundant to have unless you own them and you don't want to use them too much and you want something that's like that, then go and pick it up. But anyway, that is Club de Nui Urban Man Elixir. This one that I'm going to talk about now is a great designer release. And I'm going to show you the refill bowl. It is Ralph Club's Elixir. I've got 150 ml of this juice right here. And the reason being is because I thought that I was ordering a big 150 ml bottle. When in fact I wasn't. I just ordered the refill. So I have been decanting the goddamn thing. Because I'm not going to fork out for another 75 mil of the juice. I have asked Ralph if they could send me a empty bottle or if I could buy an empty bottle. They haven't got back to me, so I'm just going to have to continue decanning it for now. But anyway, so I've got the juice. I've got the scent. This, to me, is one of the better releases of 2023. I'm going to read you the notes and go into it, but there's nothing to see that it's literally just a refill or a refill. Right. You've got cardamom, grapefruit, green mandarin, orange, geranium, orris butter, lavender, sage, fir balsam absolute, frankincense, leather and patchouli. When this first opens up, I get incense, I get aromatics, I get spice and there is a subtle bit of freshness up top. But with or by looking at these notes, you'd be thinking the grapefruit, the cardamom, the mandarin. This is going to be a fresh fragrance. There's a little bit of freshness to it, but it's not. This leans more on the warm side of things, especially after a few minutes. I do get that green mandarin, but I can't really detect it too much up in the air. When I spray this on my wrist and I dig my nose in a little bit, then I can really pick up the mandarin, that green mandarin. It, it comes across a little bit unripe. Got a little bit of bite to it. Plus you've got the grapefruit. So there is a little bit of bite to this up top. But in with that or overshadowing that is the incense on my skin anyway and the spice. As it starts to dry down, the aromatics become more present. And this does have a woodsy powdery creamy heart to the fragrance like once you get in the mid that is when that orris butter really shows its face the fragrance does turn creamy but it has a powdery edge and like i say you get a strong woodsy undertone now the aromatics are a little bit more present but now they i wouldn't say the aromatics are sitting in the back but they're not completely up front they're lurking behind that orris butter and the woods as this dries down a little bit more i do get this piney resinous quality that comes through this always has 
a little bit of a ambery side to it. The frankincense I get, like I say, near on from the get go, the oil of anum. So it's got that resinous, balsamic, ambery warmth and sweetness to the fragrance, accompanied by orris butter, so creamy, woodsy, aromatic a little bit spicy, a little bit of freshness up top, but this fragrance dries down to be warm, creamy, powdery and woodsy and a little bit smoky on my skin. Oh, and I should say the leather is very soft, like up top, I don't get no leather. In the mid, I start to pick it up a little bit. And then when it works its way from mid to base, that is when I can pick up a very soft, light, leathery touch. And that is all it is, to my nose anyway, and on my skin. It never becomes like a dark, heavy leather. No. It's just there in the back. And it adds a little bit of personality to the fragrance. But as far as the leather goes... That is as far as it goes. And I love the way this comes across. At first, I would say it's a solid, moderate performer in projection wise. After about an hour and a half or so, it starts raining in a bit. But I've always had a nice personal scent bubble with this fragrance. After about the two and a half, three hour mark, I get a nice personal bubble. Leaves a little trail. It's a great fragrance. It really is. And that is Ralph Club's Elixir. I wish I had the presentation to show you, but I don't. But you know me by now, or I will put a picture of the bottle up on screen so you can see it. Now, the one that I'm holding in my hand that I'm going to talk to you about, this is not an overly complex fragrance, but do I think it smells good? Yes. I think it's a solid, solid release from this house. And it is Hugo Boss, Boss Bottled Elixir. Like I say, this is not overly complex. Small note breakdown. But like this is masculine. Right, you've got frankincense, cardamom, patchouli, vetiver, labdanum and cedar. Six notes. This opens up woodsy. This does have a dark side to it. The cardamom here is a little bit green. I do get some herbal touches with this, but straight out of the gate, I get a smoky incense. I get spice. I get woods. And like I say, I get a little bit of a herbal touch that's sitting in the back. After a few minutes, that spice and the incense calms down and this is when the fragrance loses that freshness because up top, there is a little bit of freshness brought in from the cardamom. That dissipates. The cardamom is still there, but that little fresh nip that I get up top has gone. And now everything starts warming up. Ambery, balsamic. The frankincense turns up a little bit. But as it turns up, everything just smooths out. And then when you're in the base, that is when, on my skin, this is at its most woodsiness, if that makes sense. It starts out woodsy, but as it dries, it just turns more woodsy on my skin. The ambery quality turns up a little bit. Simplistic fragrance. For me... <sighs> And I don't want to say, I don't want to sound like I'm bad mouthing this. There could have been more to it. I know it's a good fragrance for the brand, but it being an elixir, especially with some of the ones that are out now, this could have had a little bit something else to it. The patchouli here is dark sweet a little earthy that's in the late dry down but there's not a lot of changes 
incensey, smoky, spicy, a little bit of fresh up top or a little bit of freshness up top for a few minutes, that dissipates. Balsamic, ambery, warm, woodsy, very nice fragrance. But anyway, that is Boss Bottled Elixir. I'm getting anywhere between seven to eight hours with this. Strong at first, and then it rains in as any other fragrance. To me, this has got all year round written on it apart from summer. Cooler weather, I think you can get away with this in springtime. This might be a little bit too much for an office setting if you over spray it. I think if you keep your sprays in check, two to three if you're indoors, I mean, by the time you spray it at home, then you get to work, it's going to have calmed down anyway. Two to three sprays if you're working in an office environment or if you're in close quarters with somebody. If you're working outdoors or you're out and about and you work, you'll be fine to do five, six, seven sprays. It's completely up to you because the only person you're going to be choking out is yourself. So do 15 sprays. Fuck it. Anyway, like I say, that is Boss Bottled Elixir. It is a solid release. I just think it could have had a little bit more going for it. That's all. Now, this one I've spoken about a lot. It's been on a few lists. I've had it on a weekly rotation. This is a great scent. I looked on Fragrantica the other day, and I, that is not the best place to look because you get a lot of people on there talking shit. Like some people on there are just there to leave negative reviews. Some people are just haters. Some people just want to bad mouth other people's work. And there is a lot. I mean, I don't know everything about fragrances, but I do know that there's a lot that goes into these companies or these perfumers making fragrances, especially smaller brands. They spend a lot of time, these perfumers do, trying to make a great fragrance and then when you jump on fragrantica and you get someone that's getting a little bit lemon saying oh this fragrance sucks this and that sometimes fragrances do suck fair enough but when a fragrance potentially is a good fragrance and i know each to their own i'm not saying that but what i'm trying to get at is is that this fragrance has had a little bit of slack some people say, oh, it ain't all that. Some people say it's a good fragrance. So to me, it's a, it's like an either or fragrance. And I don't understand it. I think this is a great release, especially from a designer house. This is Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mal Elixir. I love the way this smells. This thing is beastly or near on beastly. Right, lavender, mint, vanilla, benzoin, honey, tonka bean, and tobacco. Straight off the bat, this opens up sweet. A little bit resinous, aromatic. There is some freshness thrown into the fragrance up top, and that freshness is well needed. It, it, it balances this fragrance out. Like that mint and that lavender balance this out to where it doesn't become too sickly. Gives it a masculine edge with an aromatic touch. As it starts drying, the vanilla comes through and the vanilla is one of the main players in this fragrance. You get it up top, in mid and in the base. But as it starts to settle, now the honey comes through with the tonka bean, so it's gone a little bit syrupy, the fragrance is warmed up. You've got a nice dose of sweetness there. I do get a little bit of spice from this. And the tobacco is just way in the back from mid to base. Just giving a little nod and a little wink. And that's about as far as the pack. That's about as far as the tobacco goes. It's not an overly complex fragrance. But man, I think this thing smells great. The perfumer behind this is Quinton Biche. And he has done loads of great work. He done Ganymede, Marc Antoine Bois. He's done fragrances from the Artisan Perfumer. He, he's done loads of fragrances. He is a great perfumer. And with the notes that he's used, he's utilised this fragrance or he's executed it very well. 
and I think it's a solid release. It's definitely one of the better ones of 2023. Longevity, easily eight plus hours, easy. This is great for partying. It starts off not juvenile. Anybody I think in any age can rock this fragrance. I mean, age is just a number. If you like the scent, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can be 16, you can be a 16 year old boy and enjoy masculine fougere old school fragrances. If you like that scent, you rock it. It doesn't matter what it goes. If you like it, wear it. But this doesn't start out juvenile. It starts out like someone who's 21, 22, ready to go party. And as it dries, it just matures a little bit to like with someone maybe in their 30s. That is just my own personal opinion. But wear what you want when you want. And like I say, it's beastly, it's fun, it's playful. This deserves some love. Right, that is five elixirs. Which is my favourite out of these five? Two of them are neck and neck, but I have to pick one. So me personally, this is my favourite out of these five, but very, very close. And this was like splitting hairs. It is Ralph Club's Elixir. I think this thing smells fantastic as well. And if I was to choose third place, it would be Dior Sauvage Elixir. And then fourth place would be Hugo Boss Boss Bottled Elixir. And then fifth place, because I think it's redundant to have, and I've got other fragrances, or this reminds me of other fragrances. This is fifth place, Hugo Boss fourth place, Dior Sauvage Elixir third place, Ralph Club's Elixir second place, and Jean-Paul Gaultier Lamal Elixir first place. Some of you might be going, what? Dior Sauvage Elixir deserves first place. It's a great scent. Don't get me wrong. But I like something with a little bit of a sweeter tone to it. And remember, this is my own personal opinion. So I would love to hear your thoughts. Out of these five... What would your place be? Where would you put these fragrances? Am I completely wrong? Do you agree with me? I would love to hear your thoughts. Right, people, thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for the support. Every single one of you, you mean a hell of a lot to me. Every day I wake up and I think to myself, I want to do a great video for the people that watch my channel and I try and do my best. Remember, smelling good's always a pleasure and never a chore. And I'll definitely see you lot on the next one. Cheers.